The last thing we need to do in our game is to add in walls. And we, I mentioned here that you can use the walls from Pong, and that's exactly what I'm going to do. And the last piece is that if someone runs into a wall or the, somebody else's tail, when asked if they want to play again or quit. So if we go look at our game right now, I have the grid in the background, but I don't have actual walls. So I'm actually going to pull in the sprites from the Pong game. I actually have that Pong game somewhere. So I'm going to pull in this wall vertical and this wall horizontal. I'm grabbing the base files and not the metadata. The metadata is extra information that I don't want to mess with from the Pong game. And then I'm going to put it into my Light Cycles game in the assets. So I just copied them. I'm going to paste them into sprites. Now, if I go look at here, I have these wall horizontals and wall verticals. I'm going to use the same sort of imports I used on the other sprites, so two pixels per unit, 2D and UI, and the point. So two pixels per unit, point, apply, two pixels per unit, point, and apply. So now I can take these and put them in. Looks like I need some drastic scaling here. Let's put this at position 0 and 65. It looks like just a tiny bit more. Going to rename this the wall top and duplicate this. This is going to be the wall bottom. And set this down at negative 65. And now let's grab a vertical wall. Make 65 and 0. And what was that scaling? 5.16. Looks like I need to scale this considerably more than that. Looks like I need to move this a little bit too so it matches the grid. There we go. By the way, if you click on the Y, you can kind of drag to the left or right to scale numbers as well. So if I click on this, I can scale just by kind of dragging in one direction or another. I will get this. There we go. And I will probably need to do the same thing down here. duplicate, well, rename. This is wall left. And duplicate this guy, rename this wall right. And make this a positive version of the th same thing. All right, so now I have walls around the thing. I'm going to need to make these collisions because the player is going to need to be able to collide with these things. Right now, there's a box collider on the players. So I need to actually make sure that the walls have box colliders as well. I'm going to select all of those, 
add a component, physics 2D, and a box collider. And this is going to be a trigger. So notice when I ran into that wall over there, it collided and was done. So that's a pretty fast way of dealing with collisions. The last thing I need to do is to add in a play again and a quit button. Unity play. Starting the game, I play again and quit. Restart button. OK, so let's take a look at some of these guys. This is for tic-tac-toe. A lot of stuff for for loops, buttons, heights. This looks relatively complicated. Let's see if one of the other ones is easier to deal with. Let's see, it looks like here is where the code for the buttons happens. OK, so you just have a Boolean that you set to true or false, and then you run this stuff, and that makes it start over again. I might actually pull that code. That looks pretty good. Just to make sure, what does this do? So this is assuming you already have a restart. So it basically looks like to restart, you just reload whatever scene you want. That's going to be useful in a moment. But I think I like this code the most at the moment. So let's see. This function looks pretty good. I'm actually just going to try pulling this in and see what I can do with it. So it looks like it has this extra variable here at end. So it, that's going to be a Boolean, or it's shortened to bool. These are either true or false values. That's the only things they can have. They can't have any numbers or letters or anything. Hey, function, this is actually uh, a different language. So we're going to have to change it over to C sharp. So this is going to be on GUI. So if this is true, we're going to begin this group. We're going to set a label. And if it's play again, do this. If it's this, end the group. So this is going to be the part where I restart the scene. So I need to do a code from the scene manager to restart the scene. So scene manager, load scene. So scene manager dot load scene. So scene manager is not in the default library, so I'm going to need to import that if I'm going to use it. So I have to say using Unity engine dot scene management. Looks like we lost some semicolons here. And then we are going to load whatever the current scene is. 